When I close my eyes and I picture my learning, the first image that appears before me is a school. As an educator, I know that learning is not limited to one context or one institution, but school is still my first association. And that makes sense because as the product of an American education, the US Center for Public Education says that I spent 900 hours each year in a school, which means that I spent over 10,000 hours in school before even graduating to become an adult. So why is this when learning can happen in so many arenas and contexts that I spent 10,000 hours learning in a school? The history teacher in me compels me to look back to why our education system in the West works the way it does. So thinking back to the 1800s, there was this amazingly powerful confluence of new ideas. There was the nation states. There was the emergence of this strong industrial economy. And then there was this beautiful idea of citizenship, that you and I are not just subject to the countries that we live in, but that we have rights and responsibilities to contribute and shape them. So schools emerged to try and help shape citizens. Youth went in, learned knowledge and skills that would help them come out and contribute in some way, shape, or form. Of course, you're probably thinking that some people saw this with a little bit of concern, like followers of Karl Marx, who saw our school as a way of reproducing socioeconomic inequality and social classes. And while it's true that schools do reinforce norms and reproduce them over time, today we're not trying to prepare kids for an industrial economy. In fact, we're trying to prepare them for jobs and futures that we can't even clearly envision yet. So what really interests me are the norms we're choosing to perpetuate now as 21st century educators. So I think of another man in the 20th century. In the 1970s, sociologist Pierre Bourdieu looked at our schools as a source of huge power in our world. Because beyond giving us curriculum, they help us form our habitus. Our habitus is our own unique personal arsenal of social and cultural references that we can utilize to be successful. It's made up of our social capital, the people in our professional and personal network we can reach out to for opportunity. And it's also made of our cultural capital, the shared norms and values, language and culture that we can reference to connect with those people. So for example, because of my cultural capital, I can go up to another American in the audience and have a conversation about our political situation. Or I can recognize that when my students are talking about Harambe, they're talking about a gorilla. Or where I live in Manila, that when I'm walking down the streets and I bump into two pedestrians, it's probably because they're on their phones playing Pokemon Go. So our schools today, they value the habitus. All you have to do is listen in on a conversation about collaborative or skills-based learning, or even look at the IB Learner profile, and you see that we care about those skills that help us connect with the broader world and with each other. So we're not in the 1800s anymore. But have we shifted that 19th century paradigm far enough? Today at Learning2, we're all here to try and maximize the learning experience. So why are we settling with a discourse about this linear system of education where we take youth, we have them spend 10,000 hours in school learning and developing a habitus for success as adults when we could be focusing on how they can be actively engaged citizens, contributing and making meaning now. As teachers, we can't change the whole educational system. But for me, as an educator and an advisor, I can support student work that's about making meaning now. For me, that looks like supporting things like the Global Issues Network Manila, a youth-led conference and network that's trying to connect students through systems thinking 
with better understanding global issues, going out and engaging in service, and then teaching others about them. Issues like poverty and climate change, education that shape our community in Manila. What does that look like for you? At this conference, you've heard so many concepts, so many ideas. You've gained new tools and resources, and you've met new people that you've added to your personal habitus. What have you garnered that you can utilize to go back to your schools and look at your practice to more intentionally help empower your students to contribute now? Because if we're gonna be part of that 10,000 hours that they are spending in a school, we shouldn't just be preparing them to be successful in the future as adults. It's about engaging them in meaningful work now. Thank you.